Over the last couple of years, progressive web apps have revolutionized the way we build products on the web. But one of the biggest limitations is that they're not discoverable on the app stores. If you want to write your web code once and then reuse it everywhere, you'll most likely use a framework like Ionic to wrap your code in a web view. But get ready to learn about an interesting new alternative to this approach, a trusted web activity. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code on Fireship.io. And I'm giving away another t-shirt with this video. All you have to do is let me know what you think about TWAs in the comments below. First of all, what is a trusted web activity? The short answer is that it's just a way to run a website in full screen mode within an Android package. You can already do this today, and I'll show you how to do it step by step in this video. We'll take the existing Fireship IO PWA, package it up in Android, and then deploy it to the Google Play Store. Before we get into that, you might be wondering whether you should build a hybrid WebView app or deploy as a TWA. Let's start by looking at some of the advantages of a TWA. First of all, it's very easy, and if you have an existing PWA, you can follow along with this video and have it on Google Play in the next few minutes. And unlike a web view, it's not sandboxed, so you have access to all of the features of a PWA. This means you can use things like OAuth and local storage without having to patch in Cordova plugins. In other words, whatever works in your PWA currently is going to work just as well in this native app. And your content will always stay up to date. So if you deploy a new feature to your PWA, it will automatically be reflected in the native app as well. There are also some drawbacks here as well. For example, this is only for Google Play, has has nothing to do with the Apple App Store. The next drawback is that there isn't a plugin ecosystem and you don't have access to the native device features. So you need to rely 100% on the features available to PWAs. And lastly, you need to comply with all of the policies for the Google Play Store. So that could complicate things if you have a payment system that would otherwise require in-app purchases. So what's the bottom line here? Well, if you have a progressive web app and you just want it packaged so it's discoverable on the Google Play Store, then a TWA is something you should definitely be looking into. And at this point, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Sven Budek. He has a great article on Medium about setting up a TWA. And if you're looking to hire a developer that's familiar with these things, you should definitely get in contact with him. Let's go ahead and release our own PWA to the Google Play Store in 12 easy steps. Step one, build a progressive web app. It's beyond the scope of this video, but your app will need to at least be able to produce the add to home screen button, which means that it registers a service worker and caches your pages so they can be viewed offline. Frameworks like Angular can do this for you automatically, or there's libraries like Workbox that can help you set up a PWA in an existing website. Open up your site in Chrome and then run an audit. Your production site should produce a PWA score of 100 and a performance score of 80 or better. Step two, install Android Studio. You'll need this on your local system to build the actual APK that gets deployed to the Google Play Store. Step three, sign up for a developer account on Google Play and fork over $25. You need a paid developer account to create releases on Google Play. Step four, create an Android app. In this demo, we'll just clone an existing Android app that has already been set up for a TWA. You can find a link to that repo in the main article. And if you want a deep dive for everything that has to change in the Android application, you can check out this article from Google. But you don't have to do everything from scratch because this starter repo is already available to you. After you clone the repo, go ahead and open it up in VS Code or Android Studio, and then find the app build Gradle file. Step five, update the app build Gradle file with your own information. You'll see an application ID as well as the manifest placeholders array. All you have to do is swap out those values with your own information. Step six, open up Android Studio and create a key store. A key store is used to sign your APK or your Android package, and it's also used to validate ownership of your web content. Trusted web activities only work with first-party content, and that's a good thing because that means somebody else can't just go and grab your progressive web app and wrap it in their own Android app. In Android Studio, go to the Build menu and then select Generate Signed APK. This will give you the option to use an existing key store or create a new one. Let's go ahead and create a new one and make sure that you fill out all the fields here and also make sure to remember the password. This will also generate an actual key store file on your system, so make sure to keep a reference of the path to that file. Step seven, create a digital asset link to verify ownership of the web content. To verify ownership, we'll use this key store that we just created. From the terminal, we can run the key tool command with the following options, and that will generate an SHA-256 certificate fingerprint for this key store. And Google provides a little web app for generating the content needed for the digital asset link. Just take the value of the SHA-256, copy it in here, and click Generate Statement. That's going to give us some JSON code that we'll take back to our web application and deploy to our web server. Go into your progressive web app code, and then save this file in a location so that it gets deployed to the path of .wellknown slash asset links .json. On Fireship.io, we use Hugo, so we end up saving that in the static directory. 
But again, that's completely dependent on the front end framework that you use. The only important thing is that this file is accessible at the corresponding URL when you deploy your site. I'm deploying that to Firebase Hosting, of course. And now we can move on to step eight, which is to generate a signed APK. We can go back to Android Studio and click Build Generate Signed APK. We'll select the APK option and then use the key store that we've already created. From there, select Release as the build type and then also select both signature versions down here at the bottom. That should generate an APK file that you can find in the releases directory. And that gives us the payload that we can actually install on a user's Android device. Step nine, go to the Google Play Store and create an application. From there, go to App Releases and create an internal track release. This will allow you to privately deploy your app to Google Play and then distribute it to testers based on their email addresses. Go ahead and upload the APK and then fill out any other required information. At this point, you'll see an error that says no internal testers are assigned yet. This actually means that you just need to fill out your Google Play listing. Step 10, fill out the store listing, the content rating, and the pricing details until you have four green check marks on the side navigation bar. Step 11, finish the rollout process if necessary, and then you should see a status of pending publication for your app. This is the part where you have to wait around for a couple hours, and then eventually it should flip to a status of published. From there, you'll have an opt-in URL link that you can use to link to the store listing and download the app on your device if you're an approved tester. Step 12, log into your Twitter account and brag to all your friends about how you're an Android developer now. That took a bunch of small and easy steps, but overall, I'm very excited about the potential of TWAs. If you go all in on PWA technology, it gives you the closest path to write once and run everywhere, as long as everywhere doesn't include iOS. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and make sure to let me know what you think about this trusted web activity stuff. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. What do you make all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. You gotta have an opinion.